Missy Wolf, and I'm here with John Cowan. How are you? I'm most excellent, and yourself? You are. You are super talented, by oh, the way. Thank you. We just got to watch your live stream, and I got to say, everybody that was on there was just absolutely just enthralled with your performance. And was that your first live stream on your own? It was, actually, yes. So how was that experience for you? It was tremendous, um, most, mostly because, you know, of the people that I was playing with, the other musicians, they're just unbelievable, really. Yeah, we've actually seen a couple of them before with, yeah. with other bands, and it's just, musicians around here are just absolutely amazing. Now, how did, you, how did you go about finding the musicians that you had with you today? Well, before I joined the Doobie Brothers, um, 10, almost 11 years ago, well, it's been 11 years now, hadn't it? No, 10. 2006, I don't remember. No, <laughs> it's been 2010, a while. sorry. Yeah. Anyways, I had my own career, so I had, um, I always had musicians. And right. we just go around the country and play, you know? Now, touring the country, do you have a favorite moment in your own career versus then with the Doobie Brothers? Do you have favorite moments of each? I have a lot of favorite moments, and they're, they're, you know, they're kind of all, there's so many of them, it's kind of hard to pinpoint one. Um, I mean, I've just had the most blessed career. Um, and I was in a band for six to 15 years called the New Grass Revival, which I joined when I had just turned 21. And we went all over, literally all over the world. And uh, it was a wonderful band. And I have, lately I've been um, having a lot more memories about that um, because we just, they just let us know that the Newgrass Revival was going to be inducted into the Bluegrass Hall of Fame. So I know that's so exciting. Were you were you completely thrilled with that? News? I was sh absolutely shocked. I mean, I knew that what we had done was important. I I always felt strongly about mm -hmm. that because the way we went about it was just um, it was it was very honest. We just you know we were really fortunate when I joined the band. They'd already put one out one record out. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a bit of a small fan base, you know, and so we just, we got in station wagons. I got in the station wagon in 1974 and wow. eventually we got up to using a bus at the end of the band's uh, career. And But it, that was 15 years of just hard traveling. But yeah. we, we were playing our own music. And when you yeah. get to play something that you've created or helped create, it's it's completely different. Absolutely, I can imagine. I mean, here in town, you know, you always have bands that play their cover music, but mm -hmm. when the fans sing back the original music to the artist, the, watching their faces light up when oh, that yeah. happens is probably one of my favorite things mm -hmm. as an observer to watch. And and I can't imagine what that actually feels like as an artist. It's, it's completely gratifying on, on a pretty deep level, actually. I mean, it, it comes to you on a surface level, but it goes into you really deep, I think. Yeah, absolutely. That's been my experience with it. Uh, absolutely. Now, I know that you haven't been able to perform any live shows since, what, February, you said, mm -hmm. was your last live show? Are you looking forward to being able to get back out there and do live shows for, for crowds again soon? If we ever get to. <laughs> I, I know, right? I mean, we don't, we don't know yet on what the music business is going to look like. It looks completely different now. Right. And nobody knew this was coming, so everyone's scrambling to figure out how to make a living yeah. because um, what we do because they you know what we do what musicians do for a living is we play to audiences mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes large sometimes medium sometimes small but the whole problem with the coronavirus is this gatherings of people so yeah I don't know how we're ever going to get around that and until the until the virus goes away or they you know have a a cure, so to speak, for it. Right, right. So doing the live streams, I think, you know, from what I've seen, keeping the artists, you know, interactive with their fans, it's been a great tool for that. So do you see yourself doing more live streams to help keep that interaction going between yeah. you and fans? And it's good. It's really good for us. Um, because we're in a, we're out there in a boat without any sails on it, trying to figure out where we're going and how we're going to get there because mm -hmm. we don't have any sails, so right. to speak. So, yeah. All right, so what's your next goal then with your music and your career, given the differences that, that we're facing in the industry right now? Just to be able to go back to work. It's that simple. 
Yeah. I mean, I am like uh, 44 million other people in the U.S. I'm unemployed. I'm on unemployment for the first time in my life. So wow. it's really bizarre. And like I said, it's not like I can just, I can't go get another job doing what I do. Right. There right. Are and I think that's what sometimes fans don't really see is is that side of it that that industry side of it and how it's affected everyone here negatively mm -hmm. in the music industry it's just not the same and they still want the music and they still want to see live shows and so they're feeling the hurt that way but they i don't think they really fully understand what it is you guys are going through as artists during this entire time it's pretty it's pretty strange but i mean as i said earlier i mean I've won, I'm one of millions of people mm -hmm. that are, that are um, suffering through this. Um, so it's, it's really difficult for people. Um, yep. It really, really is. So would you encourage the fan at home to down, start downloading music if they haven't, streaming it and attending those live shows and using the virtual tip jars? Because that, that for me is so important to do. If they can, but I, you know, I'm, I try to keep in mind that you know, a lot of the people are watching are in the same shape that I'm in. They don't necessarily have any disposable income. So, you know, that's why the tip jar thing, it's just voluntary because right. we want people to experience it, whether they can afford to help out or not. Absolutely. I love that you're doing that because there are some artists that have been forced to, you know, do the, the ticketed events and, you know, they're, they're trying their best. But I love live streams. I think they're so much fun and I love that everybody gets to be a part of them. What's your favorite part of the live stream that, you know, what was your favorite part about today? Playing these songs, uh, playing Andre's on songs, mm -hmm. and re getting to revisit my own repertoire, which I, you know, I haven't, I haven't been able to play it as um, do my music as mm -hmm. they as they say, right? <laughs> for a long time, so it, it's that's the joy in that for rediscovering that, and then, as I mentioned earlier, you know, each musician that you work with brings something different to the equation so yes and you also shared some fun stories and I have to know about your fanboy story because you shared a little bit of it during the live stream but you have to because I have tried to keep the fangirl inside but there are certain times where she has just slipped right on out yeah. and so tell everybody at home what, what that fanboy story was oh well this is about um, we did one of Gregory Porter's songs today in our show and I discovered him probably 10 years ago on, on, uh, on NPR, National Public Radio, they were interviewing him and they played some snippets of his music and I thought, oh my goodness, this guy is so amazingly talented. So I went out and bought his, bought his uh, records and I got really deep into his music. He's an amazing singer. I, I think he's kind of like a cross between Marvin Gaye and um, and Nat King Cole. I mean, he has wow. just this smoky, beautiful, mm -hmm. baritone voice. And he writes these amazing songs. Um, uh, anyways, uh, the Doobies, we were in Australia about three years ago in the springtime, which of course is fall there. And we were flying within, you know, we were flying in the country, you know, going from, from Perth to Sydney, et cetera, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, and we got on a plane one day and he was sitting in first class, so I'm, I'm walking to go back into the coach section, and I look down, and there's Gregory Porter, and I'm like, oh my God! <laughs> and, and so I just stopped in my tracks, and he's looking up at me like, and? <laughs> and I'm like, I think you're the greatest. I, you're just so amazing. I love your songs. I like you. I love your voice. And I love you. And then I started singing one of his songs to him. And he, he wasn't rude by any, he just was kind of like, I think he was surprised. He was <laughs> just kind of like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up giving his tickets to his show. So, we, you know, that was nice. Now, have you been able to maintain contact with him no, or no? No. No. That would have been great, but oh, what a great story, though. I mean, I can, I can honestly tell you that in my fangirl moments, I was never given tickets to a show, so good for you. That was yeah, great. I mean, this has happened to me my whole life. Um, and the interesting thing about my life is so many people that I am fans of, mm -hmm. I ended up working with. Isn't that fantastic? You know, that's like, the only real job I ever had, I worked in a boat trailer factory when I was uh, 19 wow. in Evansville, Indiana. And my two favorite artists at that time were um, Leon Russell and Stevie Wonder. Well, I had a bunch, but I was just obsessed with Leon Russell. 
And seven years later, I was in his band. That's great. And like, who knew? Right? It's not something you ever would have thought Same would have happened. Same with the Doobie Brothers. I mean, I, I used to buy yeah. their records when I was in college and listen to them and look at the album covers. And, you mm -hmm. know, being a musician, I was, you know, we're all nerds, you know. Mm -hmm. Back in the day when there were album covers, you'd open them up and you'd see who played and who produced yeah. and who engineered and who wrote the songs. And so I was an absolute Doobie Brother fan. So oh, here I, love I that. am now. I love that. Now, see, my parents are Doobie Brother fans, too. So I know that when I finally get to talk to them and tell them about our interview today, <laughs> they're going to be so excited. And they're not going to be able to wait to watch, which is going to be great. But yeah. How fun. Well, is there anything else you want to tell fans before I let you go? I know you got some busy stuff going on. And you have to tell them where to follow you on Facebook and Instagram and all that. Um, Facebook, we are at John Cowan Music okay. at Facebook. We don't do Instagram or Twitter or any of that stuff. Really, Facebook is it. We also have a website, which is www.johncowan.com. And um, my hope is that our nation and the world will continue to heal itself. Yes. There's a lot going on with the virus and the, the violence against black Americans. And um, it's time to change all that. Absolutely. We can, you know, we can't, we can only change the virus through science, but we can change the oppression of, of, of the systemic oppression of black people by our actions. That's absolutely possible. That's what's yeah. happening right now in the streets. Absolutely. So absolutely. that's my hope is that our country can heal and get better and and live up to the promise that that was made to us when our country was founded. Absolutely. And congratulations once again on being inducted into the, you know, the Bluegrass, the Hall, Bluegrass of Hall of Fame. That is just fantastic. I, I, I'm so excited for you. And of course, we know ahead of time, but we're holding this interview until we're allowed to release it. But I just I just want everybody to know I'm super excited for this guy and oh. you guys all need to be, too. And send send your congratulations to him on Facebook, guys, because he's amazing. And don't forget to stream the music and check in on all the live streams until next time. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Missy.